The Phoenix Suns have officially lost in round two Vs. The Denver Nuggets lose in four, two, and their two wins, Devin Booker averaged 41.5 points on 89 shooting, making those wins feel pretty fluky and not something you can really rely on. I felt pretty highly about Phoenix's future, even though I didn't believe they would be winning this year. But upon seeing more issues that exist with this team, once it's put under the scrutiny of the NBA playoffs and given some of their contract situation stuff, I'm getting to wonder if they really can retool this roster properly to win a championship and, by extension, beginning to wonder if they might end up regretting the Kevin Durant. Let me explain. So I'm, I'm going to say a lot of negative things in this video. I think that's fairly obvious from the get-go, but with that being the case, let me just lighten this blow a little bit for Phoenix fans by first saying something very nice, which is that Devin Booker has proved me wrong in these playoffs. I believe for quite a while now that he was a pretty overrated player, specifically, of course, by Phoenix Suns fans, and I really thought the biggest issue with the Phoenix Suns, the reason why they were not going to win at championship was because Devin Booker wasn't that guy very good, but not quite in that, like, top 10 player conversation, just that side of it. But now I think he's absolutely in that conversation, and I do think he can be the best option on a championship team, which is very high praise for me because I have a high level of scrutiny for that tier. That said, that also almost comes with a negative because at least to me, and part of the reason why you trade for Kevin Durant is because you want him to be that number one option because you didn't have it before, but now I think you do, which makes that trade make less sense, but I'm going to get more to that point later. But overall, yeah, I thought Devin Booker was overrated. He's not. He's really freaking good. But speaking of overrated, let's talk about Kevin Durant and how he performed in this series. Now he averaged his typical 30-ish points, but he had four games in this series where he shot below. 43 from the field. For the series at large, he had a 54.8 true shooting percentage which is a 13 drop from his regular season production. I'm starting to think that Kevin Durant is like really going to decline soon and that he's already starting to show signs of it given how he performed in this year's playoffs and given how he performed versus Boston last year. Now, this is entirely understandable. I'm not trying to be critical of Durant for being older and having an injury history. That's just the case. He's going to be 35 going into next season. He, of course, tore his Achilles in the 2019 NBA Finals, so it only makes sense for him to eventually decline, but who I will give shit to for that fact is the Phoenix Suns and the trade that they made, because given that and given some of the other issues that they have and have to make up for, it doesn't look that good. Kevin Durant is obviously great. He is at bare minimum one of the 15 best players of all time, but at his age with his injury history, I think they could regret that trait. Is Mikhail Bridges better than Kevin Durant right now? Nah, I don't think so. Like, he's been very good. In Brooklyn, and I think he'll continue to be very good in Brooklyn, and ironically, a lot of what he does has looked Kevin Durant-esque, but no. Mikhail Bridges isn't better than Q, but in two years, in two years, that being probably like the closest to that happening, maybe, I think it's very well possible. So with that being the case, would you rather have the better player in two seasons? Plus, Cam Johnson, who's an excellent role player in five first-round picks. I, I, I think I'd rather have that, especially given some of the other issues they have. Those issues being Chris Paul was not very good in the two games he played in the series, nor was he in round one versus the Clippers. He averaged 12 points on 47 true shooting. He can still pass, but that is frankly about it. His jumper isn't going in like it used to and that's primarily because he can't get to his spots, like he used to, and his defense on top of that is long gone. The Andre Ayton was being outperformed by Jock Lundale. Who the hell even is that? Ayton does not seem like he's going to be the solid center that they need him to be, and it's already been reported that the Suns want to move on. From these two, especially Chris Paul, but for what? The Andre Ayton and Chris Paul are both making $30 million a year, eight and up until 2026 and Chris Paul up until 2020. Now, Chris Paul's contract next year is only partially guaranteed for $16 million, which means it can essentially be just a $16 million expiring contract. But any team that's trading for him is doing so with the plan to get rid of him because they have to get rid of him to make it only 16 guarantee. There's potentially a team or two that could be interested in that, but you have to take back a bad contract yourself and just hope that that's a bad contract that's also a player that can contribute. And at that point, it's just not ideal. 
but especially in the case of DeAndre Ayton, even if you do say you can bank on his potential being enough to get him moved, I disagree. In the case of moving Chris Paul, the leadership experience argument is long out there. Like maybe someone would buy that for a little bit of money, but not for $30 million a year. And in the case of DeAndre Ayton, I've seen some people blaming like the relationship he has with Monty Williams. But Monty Williams isn't the one making him play like a coward around the rim. And his potential, well, I'm going to say it still exists. I don't know if I'm willing to bet on the maybe. He can reach that potential for $30 million a year. It's just not ideal. So you have their contracts. You have the fact you're trying to move them. If you're going to try and move, the, you probably need some level of draft capital to do that, but you don't have any picks to trade. The only picks that the Phoenix Suns can trade until 2030 is on draft night. They can trade their picks in 2023 and in 2026. They can only trade them on draft night. That's not good. They basically don't have draft capital whatsoever. And if you take a look at what players they actually have of value that they can really move to improve the roster, that's also a very short list. At best, I think maybe you'll get two okay role players for DeAndre Ayton. It's not great. Not at all. And hell, players that you have to move on from, that's one thing that's already a not great situation. But then, as I've been talking about with the Phoenix Suns this whole time, they need to have an offseason where they get a decent amount of role players who can genuinely contribute in a playoff setting. And you're not going to do that without having draft capital to move. You're just not. Now, with all of that said, they don't have the assets. They don't have the money. This would maybe all be excusable if there was some big window with this duo. But again, Kevin Durant is going to be 35 next season, and he's showing signs of slowing down. If the Suns had, just from the get, go empowered Mikhail Bridges to be a star rather than a role player in a way that Brooklyn did, they would probably be better off in the long term. And given that I now feel that Devin Booker is a number one option, I think that team, hypothetically without the Durant trade, is a genuine contender. The key trade felt necessary to me at the time because I didn't. Believe Devin Booker was a number one option. But now that I do, it feels a lot less necessary. And you pick the name and the all-time talent that Kevin Durant is over the overall better team to have, which is Mick Hale Bridges in his star form, Cam Johnson, and five freaking first-round picks. I understand that making McHale just be a star on the Suns thing. It's more nuanced than that. But I also feel like they just didn't try it at all and that maybe would have opened up some opportunity there. I don't know, man. I'm not blaming the Suns necessarily for making the trade because, again, the name and the all-time talent of Kevin Durant, it's enticing. I didn't say it was a bad trade at the time, but I felt a lot better about Phoenix's offseason until I saw DeAndre. Aiton and Chris Paul suck in the playoffs, and given their lack of assets, listen, it's not impossible to retool this team into a contender, but I damn sure wouldn't want to have that job. Will the Suns regret the Kevin Durant trade? Definitely very well possible, but we're far from the final verdict. On it, that's for sure.